So in an upcoming video, I'm going to be showing you how to build this fully portable solder fume extractor. Now I didn't want this to just be any normal fume extractor. I wanted this to be able to run off either a power brick or rechargeable 18650s. And this presented a bit of a problem because when you have something that runs off two power sources, you don't want those two power sources competing against one another to drive the load, especially when batteries are involved. Now, making sure that the two power sources are isolated from one another can be as simple as adding a relay to your project. But considering this is running off 18650s, uh, I didn't want to over discharge them if I'm using the fume extractor for extended periods of time. So that's where I came across this circuit. This is a low volt disconnect and it's fully customizable you can choose your connect and disconnect voltages by just changing a couple of resistor values and it operates a relay which is perfect for my application since I can connect both my power sources to different contacts on the relay so that they can never be connected at the same time to the fan in my fume extractor. So let me show you how to build the low volt disconnect. Have you ever found yourself situated in a paddock full of cows and need to order circuit boards? Yeah me neither. But if I did, I would use this video's sponsor, JLC PCB. Five circuit boards cost as little as $2. They offer fast production time and with a multitude of design options, you're only limited by your imagination. Ordering is as simple as going to jlcpcb.com, uploading your Gerber files and choosing your design preferences. You can also choose any colour solder mask at no additional cost. And if you're new to designing circuit boards, then check out my KiCad circuit board series to get you started. Look Daisy, free circuit boards. This circuit is pretty simple and uses minimal components. Check out the link in the video description to find out more about the circuit including a detailed schematic and component list found on my website. This project can be easily assembled on a Vero board, but I've made a custom PCB just for this project and if you're interested in ordering your own PCBs, you can find the Gerber files using the link in the video's description. If you're new to the world of assembling circuits, start off by installing the smallest components first. You'll notice the copper traces that connect the relay to the terminals are exposed. This is so I can tin the traces with solder to improve performance for high current loads. Now at this point you'll notice I'm missing resistors R2 and R4 and that's because these resistors determine the disconnect and reconnect voltages which you can customize anywhere between 5 to 24 volts but how do you go about choosing the correct resistor value? Well this is a schematic that shows all the components and how they're connected to one another but at the moment we're really only interested in resistors R2 and R4 so let's simplify the schematic to the bare essentials Okay, so here we have our 555 timer, a pair of voltage dividers, and lastly our voltage input that will be measured by the 555 timer. 
Okay, so how does the circuit work? Well, pins 2 and 6 of the 555 timer measure the voltage through a pair of voltage dividers. And if the voltage is high enough, the timer will switch on the relay, and if the voltage drops below a certain value, the timer will switch off the relay. Pin 2 determines the disconnect or cutoff voltage, and pin 6 determines the reconnect voltage. For the moment, let's focus our attention to pin 6. When pin 6 has 3.33 volts or higher, the relay will be switched on. So in order to figure out the correct resistor value for R2, first you need to choose what voltage you desire the relay to switch on at. This can be anywhere from 5 to 24 volts. For my application, I want the relay to switch on when the voltage is above 9 volts. I'll leave a link to this handy voltage divider calculator, which makes it super simple to calculate the resistance value of R2. In the voltage source box, enter your desired voltage you want the relay to switch on at. In my case, this is 9 volts. Next, enter the resistance value of R1, which is 10,000 ohms. Leave the resistance 2 box empty, and lastly, enter the desired output voltage, which for pin 6 of the timer is 3.33 volts. Press calculate, and the calculator will now display the resistance value R2 needs to be. In my example, that is 5873 ohms. Now unless you get lucky, most of the time you'll get a random value like I did and you won't find a resistor that perfectly matches your calculated value. So in this case, just select a resistor with the nearest value, which in my example is 5600 ohms. Since I'm using a slightly lower value resistor than calculated, this will mean my switch on voltage will be 9.27 volts, but that's near enough for my application. So now I know that the resistor value for R2 is 5600 ohms. Now I just need to repeat this process for resistor R4. Pin 2 of the timer determines the cutoff voltage, which switches off the relay. When the voltage on pin 2 drops below 1.66 volts, the relay will be switched off. An important note you should be aware of is your disconnect voltage should be at least 0.25 volts lower than your reconnect voltage. This helps to prevent the circuit from oscillating on and off repeatedly. If you remember my reconnect voltage is 9.27 volts, so anything below 9.02 volts is viable. I'll choose 8.5 volts as my disconnect voltage in this example. Going back to the calculator, I'll enter 8.5 volts. In the resistance 1 box, I'll enter 10,000 ohms. Leave resistance 2 empty. And lastly, enter the desired voltage of pin 2, which is 1.66 volts. Hit calculate, and the calculated value is 2,426 ohms. So I'll choose the nearest resistor value, which is 2,400 ohms. Now it was just a matter of installing the resistors and soldering them in place on the circuit. At this point the circuit is complete and ready to test. After powering the circuit with my lab bench power supply, you can see anything above 9.3 volts, the relay switches on, indicated by the LED indicator, and anything below 8.5 volts switches the relay off. The circuit draws around 7 milliamps at idle, and approximately 60 milliamps with the relay switched on. For applications where stored energy is low and every tiny bit of power consumption really counts, I'd suggest swapping the relay for a suitable MOSFET, as it would dramatically lower the maximum power consumption down to something around 10 milliamps or less. But for my application, having a relay with normally open and normally closed contacts is more useful. So if you want to see the build video for my fume extractor that'll be released not too far away, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and there'll also be a link pop up in the corner when that video goes live. 
Thank you for watching. Please give the video a like. If you found it useful, that would be awesome. And thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. You guys rock. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I just love that. No wires, fully battery operated. See ya.